Okay, so officially starting the stream here. It's been a good couple uh, eight minutes, kind of getting ready here. Got an Arnold scene. Got uh, basic cube. We're in Maya 2019, and I'm going to start by putting our sky dome on its own layer because man, it's aggravating when it's uh, just hanging out and being a problem. Put that on the reference layer, and we'll be good to go. Can't select it anymore. Happy times. Oh, so happy. All right, so um, I'm actually going to do some content from a project that I'm collaborating on, and I want to get a general feel for how my assets are going to work into their workflow. So I'm not going to share the source material that I'm working from today like I do sometimes. I'll just be working on what I normally would. Uh, in the in the program, that is to say. And here we go. Oh, well. <laughs> Got a flash of it right there. Ooh, that's quite large. There we go. Perfect. Okay. It is definitely uh, covering some other things up, though, so it'll be interesting. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, if something's going terribly wrong, I'm going to trust you guys to let me know that. Meantime, I'm going to have this up as a reference for myself on the side view, and we can get started. So one of the things I have been asked about recently is the difference between different modeling types, and I mentioned in the past uh, that there was a type called box modeling, and some people have never actually heard it referred to, had their you know, normal default modeling methods referred to that way, but box modeling really is just that. It's the way you would normally expect to create things, which is to take this box and uh, just model your entire thing straight from there. So I'm gonna be making a bug from here today, and I'm gonna create everything except for the appendages at the very ends, which are sort of feather-like. I'm going to model those and then attach them at the end to demonstrate another method. And I'll probably get the... It'll be easier if I attach the thorax uh, light chamber thing that way as well. So we'll get to see a couple of good methods here. I'm trying to figure out how I want to approach this. I'm going to have two things there. So let's get this general size going. So I don't have a reference for how large the environment I'm going to be working in is. So that's part of what I want to figure out today. You don't want to go too large with Maya or too small. So let's go maybe have these here. And the bug, I think, Ought to be about two units long, about one unit wide, eh, half a unit wide. So we're already pretty good at that half unit mark for the width. And the tail bug thing, we'll put it in here and just rough it in a little bit. So. I am going to, that seems pretty good actually. Maybe a little on the smaller side and shove it in further. So the way I'm working right now is just taking polygon shape uh, primitives, figuring out more or less how many facets I'm gonna need think some nice odd numbers are going to help us out here. And one of the problems is that the reference I'm being shown has some interesting face geometry. And I don't quite know how I'm going to replicate right now, but should be fine in general, I hope. Let's 
So we'll have the thorax, the abdomen. Let's just cut in a line for the head here. And we'll just take our two axes down like that. Cut in another line here. Yeah, there's a better way to do this. So I want to have some structures that support the size on either side. So now, because I put those edges in, we can just diminish that area there. And when we shrink the edge inwards, scaling it, these two edges will support the head shape and the body shape. So that they're not being affected too strongly. Now as for back here, we're gonna need to connect it up to this piece here. I think, as much as I want it to be an odd number, having it be even is gonna make my life a lot easier. I think eight is what we're gonna settle with here, but we're gonna reduce down to four on the subdivision height. I think that'll work. And we'll get some arms sprouting out of here way later in the process. Right now I just want to get the general shape taken care of. Sure. What that tells me is that we're going to need an edge loop here, an edge loop here. My goal right now is to get enough edge loops on the body to support connecting it to each vertice on this uh, bulb. Don't quite know what to call it yet, but uh, that's fine. And I imagine this bug is going to be flatter than it is wide and long. So with that in mind, I think Hmm, well, I've already got a pivot point down here. So if I just go to modify freeze transformations, I can then type in, I think it's the Y axis. Yeah, half, that seems a bit much. Let's go for uh, 0.75. Do the same thing for this fella here. Shift its point to there. With any luck, we'll be at least close to our desired size. Hmm. That might have been closer, actually. Yeah, that's closer. Okay, and I think it's actually going to be quite a bit bigger. Center pivot. Bigger? Yeah, bigger. There we go. So. I'm looking to approximate the shape here now. I think we're going to turn on symmetry. We've got object X symmetry going here. Cool. So if we go like that. Now we've definitely got a taller shape than we should. So we're going to go to vertices now. I'm just going to collect all of these guys. And scorch them on down.
I think that looked about right there. Add in another edge loop here. Scrunch it down. That seems reasonable. I think we'll go with that one and that one. Hey, Ignis, how you doing? <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I read the word before I actually thought about the word. It's pretty fantastic. And we'll just scooch this guy out. Poop space universe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Bum, 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 bum. So now the question becomes, I think we keep the body in line with this because the alternative is to take everything minus the connection point and have it be like that. Which, you know, of course looks kind of silly and stupid. But it could work. And if we go with that, we can have it set down proper. Alternatively, if we keep it in the middle, we can have the arms going down. I don't know quite how I want to take care of that yet. What I do know is I want these to be a lot along the uh, stubbier side. A little more rounded. Okay, go a little bit further out since we have to take this part here. And not only bring it back, but bring it down quite a bit and introduce more loops. Ooh. That's not great. Do I have to introduce more loops? I feel like I probably do, which is going to result in more loops down here. Hmm. Well, let's live with that for now. Let's deal with that in a hot second here. And it seems like there's at least one more kind of shape going on here that I should introduce. Get those a little bit on the smaller side as well. Some thorax action if you catch my drift. Hmm. So that is basically right before there. <laughs> Looks like the weirdest thumb. It really does. All right, all right, let's connect it up and we'll go from there. So I guess I'm not box modeling this at all. I'm gonna be doing the other method where you create things independently and then connect them together. Just totally fine, but I have sort of intended to show off box modeling and, and failing miserably. Combine. I'll delete the history. I'm using Alt Shift D, which I think would be Command Shift D on a Mac to do that with a shortcut. I'm going to do a target weld tool because I am very lazy today and this works quite well. Oh gosh. Seems we weren't lined up perfectly, which is 
probably fine. We're going to let the secondary shape do all the alignment for us. And then we'll move the rest of the body to match. All right, so definitely we've got some weird artifacting going on here. Let's see if we can take care of that. I think it's this guy. No, no, okay. So what's the uh, what's the deal here, huh? You just upset with me? Is that what's going on? Mmm, the whole seam. All right, let's try this a different way. Let's select all the faces and do the same thing. Mm, no, I'm trying to box model cream. Oh boy, good luck. <laughs> I hope you're starting with um. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's pretty bad. Huh. Okay. So that's a thing. Oh. Okay. All right. I'm all uh, I'm all curious about whether this is actually connected up now. Everything looks pretty uh, pretty well connected up. I'm not quite sure what the dealio is, but uh, at least it's not going totally cattywampus now. Okay. So everything behind the line getting real strongly affected for some reason. Let's see if we can even get different behavior, but really it's not happening. Hmm. What a pickle. What a pickle indeed. And vertex normal. No. Hmm. What what's going on? Thirty is usually a really good number for this. I saw something. Okay, okay. I really don't understand quite what's happening here. Let's try putting in another piece of geometry and seeing what that does. Hmm. I mean, it really could just be that everything's all weird. I have seen that happen before. It's got some pretty extreme changes going on here. And ironing out these details might be all it takes. But usually, all the things I saw were symptoms of kind of a worse problem. And as you can see, me moving around is only somewhat changing the shadow that we're getting. 
And I think that's something that needs to be addressed, and I don't quite know how to do that. It's just a bad join right here. Hmm. Well, let's assign new material. Go with a... Let's just do our usual. AI standard service. There we go. Hmm. That's really weird. I really wish I knew what to tell you guys. To the internet. Okay. Promising search here. Enable double-sided light in the lighting tab in the viewport. That's that should not be the answer. Lighting. Nope. Okay, well that makes me happy though that's not what the issue was because that really shouldn't be the issue. Shadow being weird. Hmm. Weird dark belly with my mesh. Couple good options here. Nope. Have soft normals, which you can harden by selecting the normals harden edge. Okay. So one of the other issues I'm finding is that I can't get a full selection, a full ring selection, and that seems like a really bad time. So I'm inclined just to try this all again. So we're going to remove these sections. From here, I think that'll. No, I, I do want to include that whole shebang. And we'll just uh, extract the faces. Delete their history, expand this out, grab both of these, pull them out. Delete the history, delete the sphere, group. Okay. If you say so. Alright, both these, delete their histories. So, I'm going to try it again. Combine the meshes. Pull this a little further away. All right, we're gonna go for target weld tool with the vertices, or with the edges instead of vertices this time. And we'll see if that makes any appreciable difference. Okay, it looks awful. And I truly don't understand why. This is a bad time. It should be a smooth transition. I can get a full ring, I can get a half ring. Is there something going on over here? 
Okay. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out where that tool is that lets you find out. Flip a triangle edge. Ooh. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, well, that's possible. Not quite what I'm thinking, but uh clean up. There we go. Reset tool. Uh four sided faces, more than four concave. Mostly what I'm interested in is lamina faces a non-manifold geometry. Okay, that did something interesting. Let's go with non-planar faces to start with. Oh, nope, nope. Faces with holes. Okay. That's fine. Non-manifold geometry. Okay, that did do something. That's a bad time. Hmm. Okay, well now we can try deleting the history and trying that again. <sighs> wow. You know what? I have absolutely no clue what was going on there. Kills me to say that. Really, really does, but uh, you gotta know, and you just need to give up. Do it again. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just can't win. That was frustrating. So the only theory I have going right now is that because I'm using a pole of a sphere, something was going cattywampus. I don't know what. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh... you know what? Let's just do this the other way. down, flatten it out a little bit, extrude ourselves a nice little area here, and we'll get another little body part. Another little body part. And we're gonna probably get these smaller later, but then we'll just fill the hole. Beautiful. Okay. So now we can connect with these faces all nicely. Oh. Connect them nicely. Boo, <laughs> 
Is that what I want? I don't think it's what I want. That gives me some triangles on the side, some quads here. Hmm. I think I hate all these, so we're gonna undo them to there. We could make another pole up here, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And hopefully, we have sort of the beginnings of what I want to happen here. At least we can work the way I would expect. It's an improvement. Go to component so we can just... Or not. Well, that's fine. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Huh. All right. Well, I just want to get these a little closer. A bit like that. We'll go back to the first one in a second here. us to add in some geometry to let us bulge some things. And we're going to go a little harder than that since subdividing it makes it pretty whatever. One problem is that this is becoming kind of lost. I think it's B. There we go. And we're just going to make that a little bigger and a little wider. A little much, so we'll go down a little bit. Perfect. Turn off soft select. Okay, okay. So, this needs to be pulled back a little bit. We're just going to grab some faces and start pulling around here. Make that a little longer. Yeah, we'll, make that, we'll keep that one short. And we'll go extra long on this part. 
cool. Pull these guys back to at least give us the sensation of what we're going after here. Pull these guys in and forward. Get these guys forward as well. Some kind of buggy thing happening there. At this point, once again, I feel like I've made this whole part just a smidge too small. Because really, it makes up a third of the body. Maybe give you them a little. I think I'm going to de emphasize this guy just a smidge. Emphasize this one a little more. And I think we're just going to live with that for now. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. So somewhere between these two shapes is where I want to be in the end, which means I probably should at least do something to fudge these lines. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if we can do a similar selection. Select, similar. Cool, kind of, kind of. I don't think that saved us pretty much any time, but that's okay. Maya tried, and that's what really matters. And I don't think it selected any wrong lines, which is really the important part. I am modeling a little uh, firebug kind of deal, but I can't exactly show the reference since I don't have permission, so <laughs> we're just going to... Rock on with that. I think we're just going to make sure all of this gets faceted. Oh, a uh, kind of a firefly situation, a little lightning bug. So for three, then mesh tools. Yeah. Crease, well, the crease tool. There we go. Yeah. So this lightning bug sort of has a geometric rockiness to its backside, which is why I was looking for that crease tool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll rock on with that for now. I'm going to start modeling the legs. Maybe we'll do the antennae first. We'll go to the top view just to make my life easier. I'm going to create some CV curves. Boop. How you doing, by the way, Taco? Do some CV curves, and then it's kind of straight-ish before doing something like that. Getting started, Maya. Rock on, man. 
Maybe I can mirror that across the line. Make duplicate special, probably. Copy, and then I want to rotate it. What's the best uh, what's the best axis to do this on? Which one is that? Blue, that's a Z axis. Okay. So on the rotate, we'll do a negative one. Negative 180. And we got copy to the parent. Uh, let's do it to the world. So right now we're duplicating special. And what that's going to let me do is duplicate the CV curve across the world axes. I think. <laughs> and it'll rotate it on the Z axis 180 degrees the opposite direction. Could do it just positive 180 degrees and be just the same. And I could also negative one scale it, which I think is actually what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna deal with rotations on the Z axis and get a similar result. And okay, not the Z axis apparently. Let's try the X axis. Hey! <laughs> Am I good at modeling? Uh, I can't really toot my own horn about that sort of thing, so I'm going to say I'm okay. But um, next break, I'll have a demo reel playing of uh, some of the stuff I've done before. And at that point, you can kind of judge for yourself, but uh, I'm all right. I'm all right at modeling. Thank you very much. Let me see. Yeah, thanks for uh, the, the follow, man, or lady, if you want to judge. We're just going to give a little bit more character to these guys. Okay, this one wraps in a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to go making this too normal. All right, and then probably ladies, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Gonna give it some three dimensional shape and structure here. Probably we'll bring this guy back. A bit like that. It does change the profile up there, but looks a little better in 3D space. Cheat a little bit by using a soft select here. Same thing on this point here, a little less soft select. Yeah, that's better. How do you... Uh... Well, in order to activate the orthographic view, I press space to bring up a four up view, and then I hold my cursor over whichever view I want. Typically it's the top view or the side view. And then once you're hovering over it, you can press spacebar again, and that'll enter the view. Let's see, I think there's another way to do it. You can also press over here to get a four up view. And I think whichever one you're inside of, you know, honestly, I've forgotten how to do it any other way than just pressing spacebar. But uh, that's, that's how I'm doing it, at the very least. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to go to Modify Freeze Transformations. Hopefully that actually worked. Check it out in the channel box. It did not. So we'll do it with the man man manual way here. Uh, modify Freeze Transformations. And what this does is it takes the negative Z scale that we had before and makes that the default value, and so everything's sort of just set to zero, or whatever is appropriate, in that case, one. And I kind of like that one better, and I don't want to do more work, so we're going to duplicate special that again. And that'll be a negative one on the x-axis one more time. I think we're going to just leave that alone this time. All right, both these guys need to match up. Modify center the pivots. 
and then on each of them, I'm going to hold down D, which puts it in a pivot edit mode, and I'm going to hold down V, which gets me vertex snapping, and snap it on the end there. So now I can just use V once again to snap it to the first vertex that I hit. Cool. Was it always that easy? For some reason I thought you had to double click the view you wanted to change to. Oh! No. No, it's just space. <laughs> can I see your models anywhere? YouTube? Um, I do have a YouTube. It's just uh, YouTube.com forward slash bombbeard. But uh, I need to figure out another place. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a sketch fab that's associated with this uh, Twitch account. And I'll put a bunch of the things up there. That's not going to happen today, but if you come back in probably another day or two, I'll have some stuff up there. Make sure this actually goes where I think it goes. Good, good, good. Yeah, and as soon as you see that, you'll see a couple of the models I've made, and you can watch some past videos, and should be good. All right. So I do want these to go up a little higher, kind of like that, so they're off the ground. And from here, I think all I'm going to do is start making some extrusions. So I'm going to go press Control-1 to go into isolation mode. And we'll just get ourselves a nice little cylinder here. Press T to bring up its creation attributes. And I only want like six faces and a much smaller radius. You can hold down Control while you're dragging to make that bigger or smaller. Go to 0.7, seems fine. And I'm not going to bother to do anything else. I'm just going to take this, put it into face mode. Take a turn off, soft select by pressing B. And grab some faces, except for the top faces here. I'm just going to delete those. All right, a couple cleanups to do. I'm holding space to bring up this mark menu, marking menu. I'm going to press modify and freeze transformations. Make identity apply true, so we're good to go there. I'm going to do the same thing and do center pivot to bring my pivot point to its center here. From there, I'm going to hold down V and hopefully... Oh boy. This may not work as well as I hope it will. Usually one thing you can do is hold down V. At least with... Making a liar out of me! <laughs> Jeez. I guess it doesn't work with curves, although I have gotten it to work with curves. Go away, go away, go away. We're just gonna position it manually for now. Can't believe this isn't working. I, uh, I plan to stream more, but I have been pretty bad about it in the past here. So I wouldn't blame you for perhaps hedging your bets. <laughs> but um, I do have some projects lined up that I want to stream. And I do plan on using this as a way to get me more committed to streaming. So hopefully it'll all work out. And you'll get some good content and some consistent content. Right now I'm just lining up so it mostly fits the normal attack angle right here. And then I don't get why I can't make this work. Maybe C? C one? Maybe C works. No. No, it doesn't. No. Okay. No one streams modeling or you don't find them? Right. I don't know. There's some places like um, there's a creative site that I was told about a long time ago that doesn't have as many people on it, which is part of why I'm here instead, but is supposed to be for like creative work. Um, and it's just, I don't know. Nobody was doing modeling. Mm hmm. You know what? I'm fussing too much. I am fussing. 
Despite all that, no luck, huh? Tragic. Okay, this is going to be a key moment here. The major problem that most people run into when trying to extrude along a curve is that they grab the polygon, they grab the curve, and they try to extrude. And nothing basically happens, right? You get this sort of thing. And you add some divisions, thinking it'll work. It goes along the, the normal that you set up, but it's not working. So we're going to go back to before I extruded. I'm going to select this thing's faces and then the curve. And as long as I'm not inadvertently lying, there's immediately a difference where it goes straight to the end point of the curve. And if we add in some more divisions, it progressively follows the curve more uh, accurately. It even gets the points of uh, stronger turning and adds more divisions there kind of intelligently, which is pretty cool. Wow. I'm the only one streaming modeling. That's kind of incredible. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> That's kind of sad to hear. I think 20 is going to be enough for me. And I'm going to try and do some, some fancy things. I'm going to try anyway. We'll go into the extrude face. I think there's a way to taper it. Okay, good. But I want to taper it the other direction, so can I go negative? No, but you can taper it down. So if I start with a larger cylinder, it messes everything up. That's fine. We'll, we'll, live, we'll just live with this. We'll make that taper a little larger than zero. Maybe say... Oops. Yeah, point 0.2 looks good. You can start a trend. I hope so. I certainly hope so. More modeling on Twitch. Maybe that's a hashtag we can get going on uh, on Twitter. Tw Twitch modeling, Twitch modeling. That won't go poorly. There we go. Perfect. Model a cockroach or whatever that... Yeah, in English, yeah. I'm going to jail? <laughs> what? For modeling a cockroach? It's interesting. Okay, we are going to take this cylinder. Oh boy. I may have done it now. P cylinder 2. World. Oh yeah, that's great. Alright, we can do it again pretty quickly. I want to get that cylinder all before I did any of the extrusions because I don't want to line it up again. I just want to do a negative X scale on it. We're just going to grab this here and then drag it over here. Okay, so we'll do that whole thing again. No worries. Got all the time in the world. I think I wanted 20 divisions. And we set the taper to 0.2. Oops, that's fine. Cool. We'll take this guy and hide it. Okay. Go back in isolation mode. Do. Get this lined up as closely as possible. Negative one on the x-axis did not do what I thought it would do. Hmm. Really? Are you super sure about this? Oh, interesting. Okay, you know what, that's actually a good time to save. So I'm gonna do some file management stuff real quick. I'm gonna make a project window, new project, and navigate to, actually digital content is correct. Head to here, streaming, general, Maya, perfect. This will be called, uh, 
just do general again. All right, so it's going to create the file structure for us. I'm going to make sure I set my project general Maya general good. Okay, so now when I save as, I'll have to just be in that new project that I created. So this is going to be the lightning bug 01. We're going to see many, many versions of this. Yeah, but it seems funny to you, but they are dangerous, man. No, sick, sick bastard. Wow. <laughs> Well, luckily I didn't create one in reality. Let's see, center pivot. And I think with that, yeah, there we go. Okay, then I can modify center pivot, uh, freeze transformations. Get this curve tool out of here. Do that. And then I think if we pull this out and then freeze its transformations, we'll be good to go. And then delete its history, delete the group. Perfect. Okay. So part of what was going on there is that because I had this rotated and scaled and stuff, when I was trying to do just a basic scaling operation in the channel box, it didn't quite know how to apply it. And so I probably could have just frozen the transformations and then done that. But putting it into a group before doing that allowed me to give it a different scope of uh, uh, manipulating some of its values, which made it a little easier on it. So that's the best uh, best explanation I can give for that. Unfortunately, which is not a great explanation, admittedly. Go up to 20 here. And we'll do the same taper. Point two. Okay. So we got ourselves two little antennae. What is kind of bush? Oh, doing weird things. Now that's partly because what curve is that? Let's do a four to see what's going on here. Curve three, curve four. Perhaps if I delete curve one now, great. Curve two, okay. Maybe left, that's right. R and antenna. Well, I haven't spelled antenna in a long time. I don't think that's correct, but uh, we're gonna roll with it. Beetle one is awesome. I finished it. Uh, the one I'm working on now? No. I did finish the Beetle one, more or less. I definitely always have things I want to do to them, but uh, alas. I'm going to do a little organization, put this below. I think you just need to select the curves at this point. Okay. Right, well, that's grand. Okay, we're gonna let that be, but uh, in the future, I'm leaving these connected, so that way if I ever wanna change the shape, now that these curves are still influencing the shape, we can just change the polygons that are associated with it. So for now, I'm gonna hide these and put them in like a control group or something. Control. And uh, I'll just let them kind of stay there for a while. Okie dokie. So next up, I think we need to... Is it time for a break? What are we doing here? Yeah, actually it is just, just about time for a break. So uh, this will give you a chance to see the demo reel that I was talking about. And time for me to stretch and come back and work on this some more. So I'll be back in 5-10 minutes, something like that. Maybe a little shorter, but uh, yeah, see you in a bit.